Welcome to a series of videos about wiring bonsai trees. Um, this is the first video, and I'm John Jean Angel. Uh, my good buddy Ken Duncan is probably going to be assisting and helping and, and playing a big role as this in this as we go through these series. But this is just the first one. Um, there is no substitute for naturally shaped trees, and I'll get into that discussion a little bit more. But um, when uh, you create bonsai, um, in order to recreate that image of age and um, that we we seek with the with the very nature of bonsai, um, you're going to have to train with wire. Um, you're going to have to bend branches down. You're going to have to make young material look old. Create that illusion of age. Put branches where you don't have branches. Make sure you have branches, you know, uh, um, layered out. Um, uh, this tree is a perfect example. I mean, um, this is a man-developed tree. Um, all the curves and everything in here were all wired into this. You know, this isn't a collected tree. This is one that was developed. Um, this tree is Sue Thin's tree, and it was on display at the Shohin Symposium in. New York in the fall of 2007. Um, when we think about nature, uh, you know, we, of course, we get our our images, our um, uh, templates for the kind of trees we design by looking at natural images. Um, this. This picture is a picture of a um, short needle pine uh, in a park in um, the Midlands of South Carolina and Columbia, South Carolina. Uh, it's just the very top of the tree, but it's always intrigued me. It looks better in person, but uh, I really like it. Uh, here's a tree from uh, uh, Utah. This was uh, uh, Canyonlands National Park up on top of a slick rock. I believe this is a pinion pine. But when you look at this tree, look at the curves, look at the shape, okay? How are you going to recreate that? Um, of course, nature did this, but uh, when we grow trees, oftentimes they're going to want to grow straight. They're young material. They're, they're stretching up. Well, we, we're trying to create the illusion of age, so wiring is one of the ways we do this. Here's another tree from Earlwood Park, uh, short needle pine. Uh, I love the way the branches cascade down. Okay, a young tree is not going to do that naturally. You're going to have to train that with wire. Here's an example where somebody's done almost exactly that. This was this picture's from Japan, uh, from the Taikon Ten show. Actually, this was the, this picture came from uh, the show that occurs in the basement below Taikon Ten. I don't know the name of it, uh, but this was their main tree in the first display. A little perspective on the size of the trees in this park. One of Kamara's famous plantings, as of spruce, I believe. Big pine tree. Hmm. And then I think this this picture even shows it more. White pine. Notice the long weeping branches. Long weeping branches, both sides, both trees. Very natural. Another tree, pinion pine, and then a small juniper from uh, Utah. Great curves. Look at that trunk line. So, I'd like to wire this tree. <laughs> small tree kind of in the same idea. Okay, long cascading branches. Not natural for a young tree. Look at this. Straight trunk pine tree, great curves in the branch. Um, I don't think you're going to get clip and grow pine and uh, use clip and grow method to to get branches like this. This is going to have to be wired. Here's an example of a of some young material. Uh, this is white pine grafted on on black pine. Um, it's young. It's wanting to grow up. Every all the branches are growing up towards the sun trying to get excited okay after wiring it you see the branches were brought down spread out uh, and pads were started to be created here's another example 
another Japanese white pine grafted on black pine. Everything's growing up. Symbolizes a young tree. The trunk of this tree, this could look older. It's a little wire, a little shape. You get an older image. Guy wires, copper wire, bringing those branches down, trying to create the shape of an old tree. Juniper, before wires was applied, and pruning, of course. Afterwards, hmm. Growing on a rock, like this juniper out in Canyonlands National Park. Let's talk about the basic types of wire. There's two basic types of wire. One of them is um, aluminum. This is an example of a aluminum wire that's made specifically for bonsai. Um, it look, has dark. It's very dark. It's a copper coated aluminum wire. You can see it comes in different sizes. This is a 2 millimeter, 2.5, 3, 3.5. You can actually get it from 0.5 to 6, if I'm not mistaken, in half millimeter increments. Um, these are half kilo rolls, 500 grams. Um, uh, the advantages of aluminum wire is it's inexpensive. Um, it's very flexible. It's easy to apply. Uh, but because it is flexible, one of the disadvantages is, is that it doesn't uh, have the same holding power as copper wire. Different sizes. You can actually see right here that this is aluminum with just a copper, anodized copper coating on it. Now here is copper wire. This is uh, anod or, uh, annealed copper wire. Um, it also comes in different sizes. Copper wire typically comes in is is in a gauge. It's measured in a gauge. So uh, typically in bonsai, you'll use anything from gauge six up to gauge twenty, maybe twenty two. Um, Again, this is wire sold specifically for bonsai. It's been wrapped and then it's been annealed, so it is soft and it's ready to go on your tree. Advantages to copper wire is um, it has much more holding power. Smaller diameter wire can be used. Um, it ages on the tree and uh, almost disappears, which is can be a good thing and a bad thing. Another close-up of the copper wire. Um, I'm going to put in a little plug for Adam's Bones Eye. Um, I buy all my copper wire from Julian, and I've been completely satisfied. Uh, he always has nice quality stuff. There's his telephone number right there if you want it. <clears throat> Close up of the uh, annealed copper wire. I think this is gauge 6, so that's big, heavy, thick wire. Um, the tools you'll need to, to wire appropriately. Um, really two types of tools. Um, this is, these are gin pliers, or also known as wire pliers. And you're not, um, these guys uh, are really good for a couple of things. Uh, typically it's twisting wires out thin branches. Um, uh, and also using it once a wire is on a branch, you can use this tool to actually twist the branch. Um, with the wire. You actually twist the wire and the branch moves with it. I'll show you some of those techniques later on. Uh, this is a wire cutter and uh, let me go back one more thing on the gin pliers. It's difficult to tell from these pictures but the one thing that's different uh, about these than just a regular American made plier is that they they bite at the tip so you get a lot of power and leverage at the tip all three of these. These have kind of a curved head, two different sizes, um, and this is more of a just a straight. Um, uh, I use this one almost exclusively. Um, in fact, these two tools are from my buddy Ken. Actually, all three of these tools are probably his. Uh, anyhow, let's go on to the wire cutter. Uh, wire cutters, um, if you're just cutting wire, it doesn't matter. You can use American made, you can use Japanese made. However, I really like the Japanese made specifically for taking wire off. See the blunt tip? You can get right up next to a branch and cut wire without damaging the branch. Difficult to do with an American pair of pliers. Um, also the shortness of this um, uh, head on these wire cutters um, 
uh, also allows significant leverage so you can really cut thick wire much easier than you can with an American made pair of pliers. Alright, um, that's really a start for this introduction. Uh, we talked a little bit about why we need to wire and we talked about the different types of wire and the tools used. Um, uh, please join me again later and we will look uh, more at um, the other aspects of wiring.